All right, guys, I decided to do a little game dev after work today, and I thought it's a nice opportunity to share my progress so far and some fun things that I learned. This whole project really inspired me a lot, and I feel like I've been learning every day. So I'll show you how I made my phone into a game controller and how I made a level editor as well. Maybe some of you will recognize my game that I've been working on. It's a simple car physics game focused on traversing obstacles and precise driving. And I've added a few obstacles here to my basic level from some props that I modeled in Blender. But I'm making this using 3.js from scratch and I've been hard coding the level design which is very tedious. So today I want to make a simple level editor actually. But first I wanted to put together a quick mockup so that I don't waste time coding later. I've organized all of my project info on this board and I'm gonna show you the full board later with all the resources. Now I just wanna make some quick progress. This whole level editor will actually be saving the level data into my API because I want the map creation to be part of the game and available to all players, kind of like in Trackmania. All right, so this is what I have so far. So it's time to code up something before the guys close the coffee shop again on me. I discovered that 3.js actually comes with simple gizmo controls that are perfect from what I'm trying to do. So I'm importing them into my scene to see if I can make that work with what I have. And after hacking it together and reading the documentation for a bit, I think I finally had something working, which really put a smile on my face. But I was feeling quite tired after coding all day both at work and here, so I decided to go home and relax for a moment before continuing. Man, I don't know, maybe it's the cold weather or the cycling back home, but I was super hungry. So in this episode, we're bringing back the crowd favorite, eggs. All right, let me start up the server and I'll show you how I made the phone a controller for the game. So here's how it works. The left side is like a trackpad to control the camera. On the right, you can press to drive forward and backward and you steer by turning the phone. And since this is a web-based game, you can play it pretty much on any device and platform combination. Technically, you can also do this. I mean, who am I to judge? But let me show you real quick how this actually works. It's actually using the WebRTC protocol, which is used for real-time communication like video calls, but you can transmit any data really. Initially, you need a server, which I've labeled the room API here in the sequence diagram. The game is where the car is being rendered and the player is the device you hold in your hands, like the iPad, for example. But anyhow, once the connection is established, the beauty of WebRTC is that it's peer-to-peer. -peer. You don't need any server and this makes it well suited for like couch multiplayer games. And from there, actually the phone is not doing much at all. It only sends the touch and orientation data over to the game, while the game part is applying all the logic. By the way, this video is sponsored by Miro, which is a really cool infinite canvas diagramming app. Here I collected some tutorials for Blender while I was working on the assets, and this is where I did my basic calculations for that physics bugs that I solved in the physics engine the other day. I even used it to create the graphic for the phone, because you can copy any element as an image directly. Check out the link in the description guys, it's really amazing for projects like this, we have all kinds of things going on. But anyhow, I still needed to finish my level editor, so I spent some more time coding. And after a little fiddling, I had the basic camera controls working, which made me happy. So I decided to call it a day and continue tomorrow. Man. 
man, I underestimated how much work it is to make this level editor. But after a million changed lines and some hard work making the serialization work, let me show you what I got. You can add things from here on the sidebar, you can move things around, you can rotate them, you can copy objects as well, and you can mark what is going to be dynamically simulated in the physics engine. And even with such a small number of building blocks, you can make something that's kind of interesting. And I'm very excited to make a playable demo for you guys, so we can make and share some levels to play and maybe even compete together. I really hope you enjoyed this vlog and if you did hit the like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one guys.